G'day folks, welcome to Measure Twice Cut Once, the show that gives you your fortnightly dose of woodly goodness. Woodenly goodness. Woodenly, I can't get that right. Never You've still mind. got six more episodes to get it right, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, thanks mate. Um, yeah, halfway through the season, mate. Yeah. How's the uh, fortnightly format suiting your editing um, needs? Oh, mate, it's a, it makes it so much easier for me now. I don't, I don't have to panic, you know, to try and you know get everything out during the week. Yeah. If I'm at work on afternoon shift, then I just, it just two weeks is better. And, and folks, are, folks are giving us good feedback, so yeah. we must be doing something right. Well, you think, yeah. Yeah. So we've got another bumper show today. We as, do, as we always try to present. We do. Yep. Before we get into it, um, I just want to let people know that yes, I'm aware that the um, the audio is not the best. And I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to nut all this out. It's like a a, a rabbit warren. Meccano. Yeah, once you, once you get into it, there's just so many different things that you've got to change to get good audio. Yeah, but you know what? It, it will happen because uh, the more you try to make it better, the better it shall get. Yes. Fingers yes. crossed. So. I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah. So maybe we can hear from someone who does like what we do on the ads mm-hmm. and one of our nice supporters so and we'll be back with the show after this yes we'll be right back hi chris we've got a problem what's your problem mate I need to get a sign made out of what proof of this bit of timber i think i can help you how with my bluey from blue calf cnc How's that, Rob? That's fantastic, Chris. Where do I get one? Mate, just give Adam a blue calf CNC a call. He'll help you out. So, a quick word from our supporters there, Chris. Yes. Thank you very much to them for all their support so far. Yep. Um, so, let's introduce our special guests on the show today, mate. We have uh, Vando from uh, Vando's Woodshop. Yes. Up in, uh, you're up in New South Wales, I think, aren't you, mate? Yeah, on the Central Coast, mate. Oh, North of Sydney, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, and, and a fellow New South Welshman, we have uh, Dave from Sydney Town. Yes. G'day, mate. Boys. Hey, um, so, Chris, today we have a, a good chat uh, starting over. Um, we're going to start off with a question for Vando, mate. Um, just give us a little bit of a briefing, a background on uh, why you got into your hobby. Um, basically it was, it goes back nine years ago when I had a bad car accident. Um, basically was incapacitated, couldn't move around and things and, and, uh, spinal injury and I needed something to keep my mind busy and get back and active again and using skills that I had. And, uh, so I just started making a bit of uh, a little project in the shed and a little woodwork project but I'll try and start doing starting over doing things again using my hands and that's where it started from basically it's uh, well, two years ago a year and a half ago now so yeah um, yourself though well basically the same thing I, I um I had a bunch of injuries to work throughout the years, you know, physical injuries, but in um, 2009, I suffered a brain injury and that basically put me out of work and, you know, I was just looking for, I tried many different hobbies, you know, to try and find something to do and I ended up landing in this, you know, eventually landing in this, you know. Okay. So we'll we'll go back. Um, You you mentioned, you mentioned, um, certain injuries that you've uh, had happen, unfortunately, over the journey. Um, and uh, so take us back a little bit about, you know, uh, that time where you did have a, a, a bad accident. You know, was that something that was life-changing for you? Yeah, pretty much was instantly life-changing. But, um, sitting in traffic on the way to work one morning and the girl was on the phone texting and she ran up the back of me at 110 kilometres an hour. So I was sort of twisted in the seat and it just, the way it threw me, uh, 
I actually didn't notice it straight away. It didn't hit me until the next day. I went to work replacing sheeting of sheeting uh, on a roof and it started getting sore and sore and I went home and the next day I couldn't stand up and I couldn't walk. It just it blew all the discs up in my back and in my neck. So what, what belt did you have? What were you my, I uh, started off painting as a family business. My father was a painter. I had never I hated painting all my life and ended up painting. But my passion was always woodwork. I always loved doing woodwork. And I slowly got into carpentry and renovation work and um, modelling stuff, and restoration work and things like that. But I still did painting. But we just did a broad range of things. So we basically did everything on a job. Uh, and obviously after the accident, uh, you couldn't go back to that, right? No, I, I was... Uh, unable to walk for months um yeah, a long period of time had to learn to get get up and, and motivated um moving again um the injury had caused uh, nerve damage down both arms loss of feeling down both legs and feet um problems I, as soon as i stood up i had vertigo and i'd collapse and fall over so yeah it caused a lot of a lot of issues so uh, for a long time i just could crawl from bed to the lounge and that was as far as I could go. Um, Dave, do you, do you maybe elaborate a little bit about, you know, your circumstances, mate? Yeah, basically I, I was having surgery and um, I lost a lot of blood during the surgery. And I came out of surgery, I was groggy and that felt okay, but then I went into a coma for about three days. And when I woke up, I noticed there was something wrong, like I couldn't remember things properly, you know, and I remember they, my mum brought me some car magazines from home to read and I tried reading them and as I'm reading the words, I can't remember the word I've just read. I get to the end of the sentence, I don't know what I've just read, you know, and um, I was complaining about it in the hospital and that, but they, I never saw a doctor after that the whole time in hospital, you know, and then when I got out of hospital, I was complaining to my GPs about it and that, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, give it time, give it time, give it time. And eventually, three years later, I finally got to see a neurologist, you know, and that's when they did scans and said, oh, you got a brain injury, you know. And so, yeah, basically, it took three years to find out. I knew I had a problem, you know, but, yeah, it took three years to find out. And, yeah, I, I mainly have problems. The main problems I have is with short-term memory. Um, also, with written memory, like written information, I just it goes in and it's gone, you know. And, um, verbal, you know, hearing it. With visual, I'm, I'm pretty good, you know, I can still remember things, you know, but so prone to that. And um, also, I, I get like, like Vanda, I get dizzy, you know, I stand up, I get dizzy. I also can't tolerate the heat very well. I get very, um, my vision starts going black and I feel dizzy and that. So, yeah, it's really affected every aspect of my life, you know, the, the brain injury, you know, it's, it's it's tough. And also it makes doing things very difficult. Like it takes me much, much longer to do things because I've always got to go back and recheck my work. Like, think, oh, did I, did I do that step, you know? And, yeah, so, yeah. And, um it basically, in those three years that I didn't know, you're sort of lost because you're thinking, I know there's something wrong with me and the doctors aren't really helping. Like, you know, you don't know where you stand sort of thing, you know. But um, then when I did find out, it was very hard because after seeing the neurologist, I was sent to a neuropsychologist and she, I remember her telling me, she goes, oh, you're never going to be able to do the things you used to be able to do, you know, and that was very hard, you know, for you to accept that. You're disabled now, you know. So yeah, it was hard, you know. And and Dave, what what was your job prior to uh, sustaining the injury? Was what, what were you active? I, I was actually um, a night filler at a um, department store. You know, stocking shelves and that. Like all my life, basically, when I was um, when I left school, I did a apprenticeship as a mechanic. You know. And that, it was especially at the time I couldn't find work, you know, it was very hard to find a job to finish the apprenticeship. So I, I used to do weights back then, so I just went into doing labouring and then warehouse work. So I did manual labour my whole life, you know. 
And I was doing uh, manual labor up until 2008 when I suffered the last injury to my knee, you know. And I was actually on workers' comp that whole time. And then I had to have the surgery, and that's when I suffered the brain injury. So basically, I had a, a broken body, and then I ended up with a broken brain. <laughs> that's what sort of pulled me out of work, you know. You, you can't do the job you used to be able to do, and you can't learn anything new because the brain busted, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, along those lines, um, Vando, did you do any rehab at all to, to get over your? Yeah, I, at the time, I tried every every sort of thing possible, um, every way around, trying not to have surgery because the last thing you want to do is have surgery on your spine and and lay laid out. Uh, but I've I've tried everything over the years, and nothing give it an hour of relief or a day's relief but it never was long term it, I was to the point where I, I needed surgery so um, it took five years after my accident for fighting insurance and fighting the company to be able to get the surgery that I needed and then when I did they did the first surgery on my neck and then I had to fight to do the surgery on my lower back and then I had to go back in for a third surgery as well so that was over a period of two years, and then it was rehab in between that each time. So it was a period of rehab, um, physio, and all of that as well on top of it. So it was a it was a basically a two year period, just surgeries and rehab. We've had a few people um, uh, at work that have had injuries, and the biggest issue that they come across is not the injury itself; it's just fighting with the insurance companies to try and get the money to pay for the. Um, the surgery that'll help you, yeah. That's yeah. That's what makes me angry. But. Yeah. Well, if I had had the surgery five years prior when I had the accident, I wouldn't have the permanent nerve damage and problems that I have today that I've got to live with for the rest of my life. If the, they'd listened to the doctors back then and done the surgery and paid for it, it would have cost them less, less problems been done, and I would have been back to work. And yeah, it's just fighting that they just. They want to uh, fight you and fight you so they don't have to pay. Their bottom bottom line is if they don't have to pay the money out or, or, or f do any of that, well, then they're saving money for their company. So that's what they, they want to do at the end of the day. It's, uh, it's ridiculous the way they treat people. And, and yeah, I it's, it's, you know, all, all the illeg illegitimate claims that people made over the years has forced you know people with serious injuries into the being viewed as uh the, you know, scammers and stuff. scammers yeah. are the problem which yeah. is wrong mm. you know um yeah, it's terrible Chris. It, is. it is look this is a interesting yeah. subject to talk about uh, but we're gonna we're gonna head over to hear from one of our supporters Chris. yeah yeah we're gonna have a short break yeah. and um we've got good supporters we have some of them are closer than you think some of them might be. Yeah. G'day, bud. How you going, Papa? I'm good, mate. Listen, have you got any blanks from Mind Matter Create? I certainly do. I, I just happen to have them here in front of you. Okay, I want to buy them, please, because I'm going to turn some pens. It's a pleasure to be able to do business. Here they are, sir. And uh, many happy returns on your pen making endeavours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, sir, you have to pay for them. Chris. Yes, mate. Seems like we have a new addition to our show. A new addition? Yes. I think it comes in the form of tips and tricks. And announcing those will be... As long as it's not James Finger. It's got to be. The one and only. The ever lovable, you mean? Yeah. So here's James. G'day those who measure twice and cutteth once. James from Fix It Fingers here again for a very quick tip. Today, I'm not going to show you how to sharpen. I'm simply here to tell you to learn to sharpen. I have not done any of this before. I am a power tool woodworker primarily, but you do collect a few of these, usually and very recently, 
I picked up my very first hand planes. And while they worked out of the box, of course, anything with an edge, you need to keep sharp for safety and performance. Big shout out to Paul the Wood Knight, because I basically stole his system. I have just sharpened my very first ever chisel, and it looks adequate, we'll put it that way. And all I want to do today is show you his setup, because I think it's brilliant, it's easy, it's enjoyable, and mostly the thing that kept me away from sharpening was fear. I was a bit scared of learning how to do this. I thought it'd be hard, I thought it'd be messy, I thought it'd be really, really time consuming. And honestly, while that took a little while and I'm learning, this baby makes it simple. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so if you wanna be a beginner in sharpening and not have any stress, I'm balancing essentialness versus cost. The things you need. Paul's system is a Waterstone system and I have gone for a 1,000, 6,000 water stone and that's basically all I'm gonna to have to start with. You'll need a container to keep it in because it is a little bit messy and you will need something to flatten it with. I've gone for a relatively expensive option of getting a 400 grit diamond stone but there are cheaper ways of doing that and you'll need a honing guide. Again, I have gone for the premium homing guide on the market, or at least one of them. The one you see everywhere, which is the Veritas Mark II honing guide, and it is beautiful to use. So easy, very simple to set up once you've read the instructions, and you don't have to get this one. There are many, many cheaper honing guides, but a honing guide is what I'd recommend, and that's pretty much all you need. Stone, box, guide, something to flatten. Easy as. I've got a few other little bits and pieces around too. This lovely thing is from my mate Derek Lark. He 3D printed it for me and it helps you find what angle your chisel or plane blades are. I picked up a little spray bottle because it really helps just with keeping your water stone wet. And I have got some 240 grit glued down to a piece of MDF to start things off aggressively because that is not terribly aggressive. And last but not least, I don't have a proper strop yet, but I've got some stropping compound and I'm just using, again, a piece of MDF to really hone that blade at the end of the day. And that's it, guys. Honestly, keeping your blades sharp is a safety matter and you're gonna enjoy your woodworking a lot more, even if you do rely on the power tools 90% of the time. Fix it, fingers out. Catch you on the next one. So lovely to hear from one of our wonderful supporters once again there, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got uh, both Anthony from Vando's Woodshop and Dave from My Matter Create uh, talking with us here on Measure Twice Cut once today, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, we've speak, speak, talking a little bit about the injuries that they have sustained and, um, you know, uh, some of the rehabilitation. But... Um, one of the questions I'd like to ask is, uh, why have you chosen the hobby you have chosen? Bando. Um, looking at what I was able to do again and what I what I enjoyed doing, I've always enjoyed woodwork. I've loved woodwork, and that was just a no-brainer towards the end. I just couldn't I sort of... I need, I need to do something again for to keep my mind busy and to, and to find uh, some joy in life again. And so I just started making things and it was just it was just small stuff fiddling around in the garage and, and all that and it's just yeah just slowly plodding along and it's uh, it was just nice to be able to use your mind again and clear it up a bit and and use the what you're making to um, yeah, for your mental health too, just to help you get over on top of things. And it's nothing worse of when you're crook and sick and just being able to sit there and not be able to do anything. So if you can find something you can do, and as I've said before, it only started off with five or ten minutes here and there, and it's just slowly built up as I'm physically able to do it. And now I'm to a point where I can do a fair bit more than what I was doing before. And, yeah, it's, it's been really enjoyable but really, really nice, good fun. And, and you're very busy, very active. I certainly view a lot of your Instagram posts. Uh, and, yeah, he's always making some brilliant stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, Dave, how about yourself, mate? How did you find uh, the craft that you now pursue? Well, same basically like Vando. I, 
I, I did woodworking at school, you know, for six months. They they should do woodworking, and I, I love the smell of the wood and all that, you know. But um, when it was probably about 2018 or so, I started seeing all those river table feeds come up in my YouTube video, you know, feed, mm. and I'm like, oh man, that looks like something maybe I could do. And but it was very expensive that, you know. And then I found a channel called Heath Knuckles on YouTube. He was the original guy that did all this. Um, hybrid casting and turning on the lathe and making these art, beautiful artwork pieces and thought, man, I could do that, you know, I just it's a lot cheaper on materials, so that's why, you know, I bought the lathe and I started doing that, you know, and I, I found I loved it and, you know, I, I really liked the whole creative, you know, I loved drawing when I was a kid, I liked colours, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, and and I like working with my hands and it, it all sort of just ticks all the boxes, this hobby, you know. Um, yeah, that's how I basically got into it. How I, I yeah, how I got into it. Yeah. And, and Chris, if you if you put your arm out to the right and put up on a shelf, the uh, ladies and gentlemen will present some of uh, Dave's work. This is uh, I was I was gifted this from um, from Dave, and I got to tell you, it is without a doubt the nicest bottle opener I've ever owned. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's beautiful. And I've got one as well. Dave, you, you incorporated the uh, our sort of trying to get the best capture of our colours, of mm. our logos in it. So, yeah, I've opened a few bottles for you. Yep, I've opened many a bottle with this one. Even um, uh, champagne bottles. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Three right off there, mate. <laughs> But the other thing, I've, I've bought a lot of um, pen blanks from uh, Dave. Yes. And uh, and they are, whenever I make a pen out of those, um, people always comment on the, the colours and, and perfect, beautiful. Love your work, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. You kept me going. I'll tell you what, when I was worrying, I think, you know, oh, geez, did I do the right thing by doing this hobby, you know? And then Chris was my first customer, you know, and he bought a bunch of, Pen blinks for me, and it, it gave me that motivation to keep going, you know. And yeah, so thanks, Chris, you're alleged. I You're welcome. Funny, Dave, Dave sometimes said, Oh, I sell scales, and I'm pumping the logs, and we're thinking, What for? What, what are you selling stuff people can weigh themselves? On? No, no, he's, he's a closet cocaine dealer. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, the scales for the knives on the handle. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, we know now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Vando, I one of the builds that always comes back to me that I viewed on Instagram of yours was you made a router table, didn't you? You made a was it a router table? A yeah, I've made a, made a few things. Made a router table, yeah. With the uh, drawers that pull out and the wings that fold out, and yeah, it's uh, an absolute gem when you build. I really thought you, you put your heart and soul into that one. Like you know, you, I've seen a lot of them on YouTube and whatever, but I, I think yours takes a cake. It was a, a pretty, pretty, pretty unique way you did it, or just come across the finished product as yeah, it was it was a good, good fun build and. It works great. I love it. I use, I, I use it all the time, and it's. I love how it just slides out, and you can get access to everything easily, and yeah, it's nice. So, so, Chris, like these, these gentlemen make a lot of things. Uh, no matter create, so he's always thinking, mm -hmm. uh, Dave. And we'll start with you, man. No, give give us a, a rundown of some of your favourite builds you've done. Um. Well. I started off just building up all my shop furniture, and that was uh, that was a lot of fun. My workbench that was something pretty unique as well that I really had a lot of fun doing. But of late, I've been I've been making a lot of mallets, and they're they're always fun to do. Starting off with some of the old recycled timber that I get, but then I've sort of gone into a bit of uh, resin work and uh, charcuterie boards and stuff of late, and. But I've been doing a few different ones, a, a few honeycomb patterns, and they've they've been a, a lot of fun to do. There's a lot of work in them, but it's a uh, yeah, good fun. And I yeah, cut it all out on the CNC and and then set it all up and make it. And I've got one at the moment, part way done, a little uh, puzzle piece board that I'm making. And that's 
And it's interesting, things like that, just using your imagination, your mind a bit and doing things a little bit differently. And, yeah. And Dave? Oh, probably my favourite. I really enjoy doing the stuff on the lathe, you know. Um, probably my favourite one was, uh, it's up on YouTube, I have is the, I made this, it look, it's a little bottle, you know. It looks like a little bottle and it's got the, Burl on the bottom and it's clear resin. I really like how that one turned out. That's probably my favourite um, project that I've made. And, you know, also the casting the stuff, the little dioramas, you know, with the Star Wars stuff inside and casting them. I really like doing those um, projects, you know. The, the woodworking, you know, I've built a lot of, you know, my benches and stuff and, you know, done my um, garage in here. But I really do enjoy the... Um, the lathe, you know, like making stuff on the lathe, it, it, especially, you know, when you finish it and you, you sand it and it's like glass and you can see through it and you see all the crazy colours and that. I, I really like that, you know, I really enjoy that. Diorama. There's a new word, diorama. Yep. Word of the day. It is. Yes. Your, your question to the, our special guest today. Um, I'm not going to ask a question now. I'm going to throw us back to another supporter. Oh, well, yeah, let's hear from one of our supporters. Okay. So we'll be uh, back after this short break. Yeah, good day. How you going? I'm good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, there's a bit of a material going about called structure panel. Yeah, it's great stuff. Is this place stock it? We've got tons of it. Tons of it. Can I get a ton? All right. Or I'll just start with one sheet. I'll give you one sheet to start with. All right, let me have it. Oh, that's big. Thanks, mate. Have fun. See ya. Another <laughs> happy customer. Lovely to hear from our supporters once again, Chris. As always. We are very thankful to them. Um, getting back to, uh, oh, we have Vando from Vando's Woodshop on Instagram and also Dave from My Matter Create. Yep. Uh, Vando, question, you, you talked about a little bit about your re rehabilitation and, you know, keeping your mind active and using, uh, learning different things. So you mentioned about CNC. Um, do you find... Everything you do, a new challenge, like with CNC and incorporating that into your work, is that something that helps? Yeah, it's it's challenging because the brain doesn't quite work the same as it used to after all the medications and stuff that you've been on for years and, and going through the accident and that. But it's a good challenge. It's still, I, I struggle to pick it up at times with different things, but it's learning the new software and learning the new things. But it's it's... It's good. It's nice to sit down there. It frustrates the hell out of you sometimes, but but it's like everything. You work your way through it. And, but it's uh, it's it's nice. It just keeps you refreshed and, and learning new things and doing new things. Once you've gone over it a few times, it, it gets a bit clearer. And, you know, yeah, it's it's been good for the the whole mental health as well, and just keeps me busy and entertained at times as well. Watching the stuff turn out, it's it's. Uh, it's pretty amazing when you've finally you've, you've got something in your mind that you want to make up and design and things, and then it all comes to fruition when it starts cutting out and, and working. And it's, it doesn't always happen the right way. You sometimes everyone and you stuff things up and you muck things up, but it's the learning curve of it, isn't it? So we just keep going until we get it right. It's a special thing, it's like, you know, from when yeah. you're young. And you're Every time you take on something new and you finish it and you see the end result, it gives you that buzz, doesn't it? It does, yeah. But mm. if you, yeah, no, I, I remember when I, when I got my CNC machine, the first thing I pumped out of that, that was, you know, it was like a revelation, you know, you, you're doing something that you've never done before. And it's, it's, it's actually, like you said, come to fruition right in front of your eyes. So it's, it's, a, it's a great hobby to get into. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a learning curve, but it's been a nice. Still learning. There's so much you can do on it. There's an incredible amount of stuff that you can do with it. 
Oh, you're you always learning. You scratch the surface. Yeah, you, you, you're always learning. So that, that's yeah. the good thing about it. So. And, and Dave, you, yourself, with uh, incorporating some technology into what you do or, or just venturing away from what you already know to take on a new aspect of it, is that what you look forward to? Oh, uh, yeah, like I would love to get into CNC and that, but my brain, I just can't learn the software. It's, it's just too difficult and too frustrating, you know, but I am getting into like 3D printing. I like the 3D printing, you know. Um, but yeah, I find um, trying to learn new things is very hard for me, you know. But, um, I just can't remember what I've just learned, you know, and then you can't build on, you know, you can't build your knowledge, you know. So I try to keep things simple. Um, you know, like when it's on the lathe, you just got your tool and you're, you know, you're cutting away, it's pretty easy. But when you're learning those technology, it, it, it is very difficult for me. But I, I always try to, I don't try to keep myself stuck in like a pigeonhole, you know. I always try to learn new techniques and new things and challenge myself. So, um, yeah, and I, I also want to do other things like, you know, I'm doing the resin casting and that now, but I want to try and reduce the time I do on that and get more into the 3D printing, you know, and also um, the model building and diorama stuff, you know, I really enjoy that. It's very relaxing, you know. So the 3D printer is good for that. I can print the stuff and then I'll sit back and paint it, you know. But, um, yeah, but technology is very hard for me. Learning new things is very, very hard for me, you know. Well, I suppose you, you can you can never say never, you know. It might be a, a slower process to pick up. Or, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to learn CNC myself, but I know I've got a bit of a challenge ahead to, you know, I'm going to pick Chris's brains and, and whoever else has done it. So, yeah, it's like everything, isn't it? You, you, you just chip away at the stone and eventually you get there. Um, yeah. I, see, that's the strange thing. I can do complicated things, you know. Like, I built a car, I man. If you've seen the car I built, geez, it's all complicated, you know. But um, it's learning the new things that's difficult for me, you know. And if it's new and complicated, oh, it's brutal, you know. I just... Keep hitting a wall and, and kind of get past the, the, the software side of it, learning how to yeah. make do and design the software side of it, doing the actual item and probably be all right, but just, just getting that software there. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a learning curve, especially software, if right. your mind's not quite there. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah and the strange thing is, I, I, like, I, I have you? the same issues. I mean, when, when, um, when I first got into um, the, the CNC machine or the 3D printing or anything like that, uh, the learning curve for me was really steep, really steep, you know. But, uh, I mean, going back a few few years ago when I, when I uh, decided to teach myself uh, SketchUp, I, uh, I used to have a full head of hair before I started that, uh, that little project. <laughs> and um, I, I couldn't even make a box. In it, I'm thinking, what the hell? What the hell? You know, what am I doing wrong? But then it all eventually just clicked into place. You know, so don't don't think because you've had a brain injury that, that you know you're any. I I found it hard to, to learn that technology myself. So yeah. you know, I can just keep chipping away and you'll, you'll get there. Yeah. You know what the weird thing is? This is this really strange thing. The memories are in there. Like when the neurolog neuropsychologist did the testing. She said the memories are in there. When she gives me little hints, they all just start coming out. It's when she just leaves me to say, okay, remember this, you just get disconnected from it. You can't remember it. So when I'm doing things, if I just repeat, do them all the time, repeat, repeat, I get those little hints and the memories come out and then I can build on that, you know, but it's very patchy, you know, it's, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another Question I'd like to ask, Vando, we'll start with you, mate, is um, obviously you make a lot of things. Uh, are those things then turning into startable items? Do you find that you can sell what you make and or do you make them as gifts as well? Uh, when I first started, I was making things for gifts and that and it was just for, for fun and making things for family and things, but um, now I'm Everything I'm making basically is for sale now. I'm trying to make a little bit of living off it. You've got to 
get some income back from it to be able to afford to keep going and making new things. So, so yeah, I've, I sell a few things online and through a website and through a little local store that I've been selling a few things through as commission work and that. So, and people know and they ask for a little commission job. So I've been doing that as well. Um, so yeah. just, uh, I'm not sure if this is right now, but are you working now? Do you get a job now? No, I'm not working full time anymore. I'm a single father with three teenage kids. Um, I, I I can't work in my old job at all anymore. I've still got nerve damage down my right side. Um, I've lost the feeling down my right leg and foot, so I can't feel it too well. Um, so yeah, it just makes it pretty hard. So that's why I'm just doing those sort of things in my shed. And when I'm able, I, I'm out there working. And when I'm not able to do it, I'm, when I'm my back and everything plays up on me I just come back in rest rest and relax and and then the rest of the time is looking after the kids cooking cleaning and and getting them off to school and getting them home and so forth so that's sort of the main part of my my life is the kids and then I fit everything else around it yeah, yeah. what about you though you, um, apart from making an income all of this um, do you find you, you can uh, offload or sell some of the things you make through different, you know, social media sale places or marketplace or, you know, places like that? Yeah, the, well, basically the, what I originally was doing, you know, all the turnings, I couldn't sell them, you know. It was very hard. I couldn't sell them. So that's why I got it. I figured instead of making finished items, why don't I make stuff for makers, you know, and that's why I got into the pen blanks, the knife scales, the knife handle box, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I'll put, I have a Facebook page there. You know, you guys link it there. And it's uh, basically that's where I put where I sell that stuff. And, it like, I have a very small profit margin. I mainly do it. It keeps me busy, you know, it keeps me occupied. And when I sell stuff, it, it basically pays for the hobby, you know. And um, the little bit extra I make, you know, I can save that and it allows me to buy a tool or it makes cost of living a bit easier, you know. So, yeah. That's, but, yeah, it's not my basic. It's not something for me, though. That was a car. That was definitely a car that just went past. Yeah. It wasn't here. My stuff, yeah. maybe. We'll be hungry. <laughs> yeah, you just said, Dave, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, and Vando as well, we're recouping some of the costs because it is an expensive hobby. And I think that's what we all set out to do, isn't it? Once we, well, once we, once we get set in there, once we get set up, we look at saying, if I do make something and it does make a little bit of money back, it'll justify why I began and I bought this and I bought that, you know. And then after after that, we'll profit and we're rich. Is that yeah. You got to, you got to make a lot of product, a lot of products to recoup the cost back. But it's, it's a hobby. It's a labour of love. But you're never going to, you're never going to make a killing off doing these things unless you're massive turnovers and doing big, big items and things like that. I think the scale that we're doing is, is it's, it's a hobby, and you, you make enough to cover your costs. And then, like you said, buy another tool or put a little bit aside for another item or things like that. So it's it's just a, a hobby to keep you busy and keep you going. And you're not going to make a living or or make a million bucks out of it. But it's it's good fun and it keeps us going and keeps us entertained and enjoy what we're doing. And and better than uh, giving up on life and and all those things. So it's just keep plodding along and it's, it's nice to be able to make small things and yeah it's just it's good fun so we hear from uh, another support yeah another, another supporter yeah yeah we've got just uh, just enough time for another supporter and then we'll come back and uh, and kick these guys out yeah as we G'day, Hoss. You look Hello. like you're in trouble. Yeah, Harry. Thanks, mate. Um, I've, I've been trying to sand up this blank, but I just can't get it shiny enough. Mate, I've got a two-part solution from Custom Creations. Really? Does it work? Give it a try. I will.
How'd you go, Mike? Harry, that was the best stuff you could have given me. Look how shiny this pen's come up. That is superb. I oh, love it. It's brilliant. Thank you very much to our wonderful support, Chris. The yes. support crew are better than any Bathurst support crew. You've got to admit. Pit crew. Pit crew. Yeah. yeah. So, excellent. Now, we have Dave from My Matter Create and Vando. From Vando's Woodshop. Yeah, and uh, we had the privilege to speak to him today. On yes, about yes. A lot of subjects. They've but... been very open about their life's uh, travels. But I've taken the mark and we'll get the handball to you on the run because you have a question to ask you, gentlemen. Okay, we'll, we'll kick off with uh, with Dave. Um, what's the future hold for you, Dave? Where do you think all this is going to take you? Um, I don't know. Like, I think I'm going to keep doing this, um, the resin casting and that. But like I said, I want to get into 3D printing, you know, and, and um, you know, model building, diorama building, stuff like that, you know. That's what I really want to like to do, and believe it or not, I also want to get. I'll be moving soon, you know, into stay. When I get my place, I want to do a big, you know, I want to get back into gardening, and I might even do a gardening YouTube channel too, you know, a veggie garden and that, you know. So that's what I've got on plan for the future, you know. When you say moving into stay, um, you're going to stay in New South Wales or? Um... No, South Australia. South Australia. I've got family over there, so. And, yeah, I can buy a nice little house near the beach, you know, and yeah. So that's the plan, you know. I'll go there, I'll set up a workshop, I'll still be doing what I'm doing, but I also want to dedicate some time to get back into gardening too because I really enjoy that, you know. I used to do it years back and I'm thinking i will get into that and also uh, maybe do a YouTube channel doing that and I'll still keep doing what I'm doing too, you know. That's very interesting. So, near the beach in South Australia, uh, there's another place where you go and visit. Yeah. And <laughs> what sort of vegetables do you grow? Yes. He's not going to tell you. Oh, what uh, kind of vegetables? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you very well. Um, just your usual vegetables, you know, tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, you know, all that kind of stuff. No, no, it's why he's selling. It's why he sells scales because it's going to be um, the <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I like freedom, mate. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so again, well, same question to you, Vando. What's uh, what's the future hold for you? Um, to be honest, at the moment, things are a little bit up in the air, but woodwork-wise, I'm going to just keep going the way I'm going and keep making a few things. And I've, I've done a lot of resin work lately, but I want to get back into doing a bit more woodwork side of things and making things. But, um, yeah, it's just... All, all depends around the family and things with kids so I just work my life around that so when I've got time I'm out in the shed working and doing stuff so that's yeah that's about it really just keep plodding along the way we're going and as time comes thing different things come up so we'll keep making things roll with the punches you know and uh, see see where the track leads because uh, we all don't really know you know we can set targets and goals but Sometimes we don't get there directly. Well, my, my next target is retirement. So that's that's about 18 months away. And I'm that. 18 years away. 18 months. 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 I've, I retired nine years ago, so I was pretty lucky there. What well, is this the Robert Ince here? I've got about 15 years to go, guys. Oh, boo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, look, thank, thank you both, Vando and Dave, today. It's been a good chat, and we do uh, really appreciate that your honesty and uh, help. And, uh, and um, well, we wish you all the best for your endeavors to whatever you do. Keep posting, keep making, and um, we might even have a cup on the show. We might get you to host it. Oh, all right. Can't do any worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for having me on guys I really love the show and I've been a big supporter since the beginning of it and yeah thanks guys no worries yeah, like, likewise guys thanks guys appreciate it as well good to meet all you right. Dave and good nice to meet you too. pleasure alright uh, that's it that's it hello Hoss how are you Harry good thank you I'm looking at doing a little bit of epoxy work yes I can help you there do you have a product? I do. Who, who does it come from? It comes from Hamaru. Let me have a look, please. 
My, my, that looks like a two-part mix. It is a two-part mix, and it's a two-to-one mix, as it says on the bottle. Is it made in Australia? It is. I might take a few more, then. Well, I only have these. I'll take those. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you, Harry. You're welcome, boss. Got the pipe. <laughs> A big thanks there to some awesome, awesome guys, uh, Vando, over on Instagram. Yep. And also uh, Dave from My Matter Create, who yes. is one of our supporters. Yes. And Dave is a, he's a, he's a top bloke. He's, uh, we should all go support Dave because he's, uh, he's been doing some great stuff out there. Oh, he's, yeah. His pen blanks are brilliant, yeah. magnificent. And you've, you've cleaned him out again. I have, yeah. I always usually buy him, buy him out, so... <laughs> So he appreciates I that. might have to start uh, making some pens now. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, as always, if you enjoyed the show, do all those things. And, uh, Chris, you're going to put a banner up here to... Oh. People can put their little buttons on and it'll come down and you can choose all these other shows we've done. So no pressure, right? There's no pressure. Okay. Just do it with my finger going up there and the timing. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back with another Rip Snorter show in two weeks' time. So take care, and I'll sign off by saying, boo And bye for now. A little bit of an angle, Dirk. You've got to give each other room. Yeah. Hang on. How's that? <laughs> two cities collide. <laughs> Maybe we're too close or it's too loud. <laughs> Tell us about the other. Hey! It looks clear from here. That's <laughs> a better view. <laughs> <laughs> Is Vando frozen? No. I'm just sitting here really still. <laughs> yeah, I'm bombed out, mate. I wouldn't make a very good interviewer at all, would I? He's just there for the looks. <laughs> what are you trying to say, mate? No wonder we can't get subscribers. <laughs> might, might, have, might have worked. It's probably, you know, it's probably his hyper quality in the background. <laughs> <laughs> drain, drain all his power. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much there to Anthony. No. Vando. Yeah, his name's Anthony. Oh, is it? All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>